We open up today's program with a visit with one of the many new faces here at Hastings Racecourse, and that would be trainer Dale Greenwood. Dale brought 25 horses from Alberta. That's his full stable, 25 horses. And with a stable like that, we thought it would only be fitting to introduce you to Dale Greenwood. I was born and raised with thoroughbreds. I've been around them my whole life. I got my trainer's license in 1982, so it's, I think it's, this will be my 27th year. Been at it so long, I couldn't do anything else. Nobody would want me to do anything else because I'd be no good at it. But uh, it's a, you gotta love it. You gotta love the horses and you gotta love the people. It, it, the racetrack's kind of its own little community and you know, everybody's got their own personalities. It's, it's uh, just, you know, you gotta love it. It's, it's a great place and good people here. What's brought you to Hastings? Bigger purses in Alberta and uh, the lack of a new racetrack and everything seems to be going downhill. So we uh, decided to change our venues and come where things looked uh, a little more on the up and up. I was here last fall for the last six weeks of the meet, but uh, I didn't have a lot of success. Just come over, just uh, testing the waters and, and making sure that it would be a fine place to come to this year. It sure makes it kind of tough to get up and leave though, any place, doesn't it? Especially Alberta for me because it's, I was born and raised there and it's it's home. But uh, we're basically, we've been in the process of moving for a couple of years. We spent last winter in Maryland and come back for re personal reasons and had to get out of Alberta. Yeah, you mentioned Maryland. You took the outfit there. First of all, we should know about your owner. He's a little about their stables. Danny Dion. He's uh, started. I started with him about seven years ago, and he's gone from one horse to I don't know how many he's got. He's got multiple horses now and and he's got a big outfit in Toronto and had my outfit in Alberta and we moved to Maryland last, we spent last winter in Maryland and and come home because my father had got sick and other than that, if it hadn't been for my father, we probably would have never come back to Maryland. We probably would have stayed in the East Coast somewhere. And you, he shipped the whole stable here because you had to come back because you're for your father, didn't he? Yeah, and I, uh, I really appreciated that because my father ended up passing away and I got to spend three months with him before that happened. And, and uh, Danny was behind me the whole way, so was, uh, not many people could do that. And you got the happiest assistant trainer. <laughs> What's her name? Lisa McKenzie, yes, she's, uh, she does a great job for me. She's on top of everything that goes on and, and uh, very knowledgeable, knows all the horses, knows what they need to wear. and and uh, very seldom ever makes a mistake. Yeah, when you go from one racetrack to another, do you have to, how do you pick the horses? Pretty much, it's not too hard for me to pick horses. Danny supplies me with horses and he's, you know, he's went out and he spent a lot of money and bought good breeding and uh, basically my horses should fit just about anywhere we go. They might fit in a different category, but they'll fit somewhere, you know, in the, you know, don't matter where we go, they're gonna fit somewhere. Is your claimant stable? We've got lots of claimers, but uh, we don't we don't start out that way. They, they just end up being claimers. <laughs> <laughs> they have a way of doing yeah, that, don't they? they? They sure do. When you came out, it, you brought you ran in a couple of stakes, and you got. I come at last. Yeah, when we come out, we come out Derby weekend last year. We had a horse in the Derby and one in the Oaks and one in the Constellation, and we were supposed to fly them out and. We shipped them from Edmonton to Calgary, and and the guy wasn't there, never showed up to load them on the plane for us from the airline. So uh, we ended up they had to van back to Edmonton and van over here. They were on the road for over 24 hours, and we got here. I shouldn't even run the horses; they should have been scratched. But we put all that money into it and stuff. We run them, and they just they, they all run the same. They run for half a mile, and then they petered out. They were tired. It wasn't the horse's fault, and it wasn't. Uh, it was just uh, it was an airline's fault. Strange things can happen in the sport, can it? That right, right. It was uh, one of them things. Uh, we tried to do everything right by flying them out here and giving them, you know, four hours of traveling and ended up with over 24 hours. Yeah. How have you found it being, you're in the most unusual barn we have here. It's, it's, a, it's like a temporary barn, but it's, what do you, it's great. I, I like it. It's, there's lots of light in there, and uh, we don't. Uh, I've never had a sick horse. There's been lots of sick horses around. And I haven't had a sick horse in that barn, so I'm pretty happy with it right now. 
your thoughts on racing out here because you're here. What are your thoughts about what's going on out here too? Well, it, with the economy, and it, racing's uh, hitting hard times just about all across North America. There's very few venues that it isn't. I mean, Wood, Woodbine's one of them, but everywhere else has got their own problems, and it's mostly with the way the economy's going, you know. Uh, at least I, what I see out here, they're trying to uh, make things work and improve everything, and everybody seems to have a positive attitude, and I think that goes a long ways. You go about selecting your riders. Did you bring your own rider here? No, I didn't bring any riders. Just, uh, you just try and get the best riders that are available. I mean, Pedro Alvarado rode a lot of horses for me, and I got Prez is getting on a few, and Frank Fuentes. So, I mean, they're all the top end of the riders here at Hastings, and I just, you know, as long as my horses run good, I guess that won't be a problem. If they start running bad, i uh, probably have trouble getting them. Yeah, when, when you run a horse that gets beat, and maybe thought should have won. Did it stay with you? You just, you remember what happened. It might, might, maybe it got beat for something that happened in the race, or uh, there's a, all kinds of things that can happen to cause a horse to get beat. Maybe Plum got outrun. If he Plum gets outrun, then I'm disappointed. But if I see, you know, factors where he gets in trouble in the race and gets trapped inside and can't get out, stuff like that, that's part of the game. It happens. It, it doesn't matter how good a horse you are. If you get in trouble, you're not, you can't, it's hard to overcome. You mentioned if you could win 25 races, you'd like to win more, obviously, but 25 would be a nice number to hit. What do we have in the box? Well, they're, right now, they're all real good horses. I haven't got any of them beat since I've been here, but uh, time's gonna tell. I got some horses there that are unknown quantities. We, gotta, we just gotta get them running and see where they're at. They've come to me and they've had a, one or two starts elsewhere. I, I don't know exactly. They train like they could be a good horse, but uh, until you up and run them against good horses, you don't know, you know. Time will tell. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome.